Welcome to Fam Church Online. My name is Claire and I'm so glad that you're tuning in with us this morning. We would love to connect with you and if we haven't had the chance to do so yet, please text welcome to the number that appears here at the bottom of the screen. We'll send a digital connection card to your phone. You can fill that out and send it back to us and we'll send you a gift in the mail just for connecting with us. As always, we hope Pastor John's message really speaks to your heart this morning. And if you would love to connect with people in our community, you can do so down below in the comments. Thanks, Fam Church, for staying so faithful in your giving. Remember here at Fam Church, there are four ways that you can give. You can give through our app, you can give through our website, you can text your amount, or you can mail it via snail mail. However you decide to give, I want to thank you once again for staying faithful in your giving. It's helping us do ministry, and we're eternally grateful. Thank you. God bless. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. You unraveled me. With a melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave.
Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Hope this video finds you well. How's your summer going? I hope you're having a great summer. Uh, maybe some of you have taken some vacations, and maybe you've gone to the beach to make sure it's still there. <laughs> That's what I do. My wife and kids want to go to the beach. I just want to go and see it. Oh, okay, yeah, it's still there. Get me back to the mountains. And so um, I hope that y'all are having a, a great summer, and I miss you like crazy, and can't wait to see you face to face. But the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. And uh, we're going to have a good time today uh, with the Word of the Lord. And so let me talk to you today, if I can, about the calls of God, about the calls of God. You know, a lot of people are wanting to know what they've been called to do. What, Pastor John, what am I supposed to do? Once I become a believer, what do we do? How's all this work? Well, you know, there are some calls that are actually outlined in the Bible. And so you don't have to wonder about some of these calls because, as I said, they're explicitly outlined in the Bible. There are different calls that we experience. And I'd like to share some of those with you today. The first one that I'd like to share with you, and pardon my eyes from darting back and forth because my notes are down here in front of me, but I, I want you to hear me in some of these things here. But one of the callings that we are to experience is God has called us to a holy calling. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 9 that he has saved us and he has called us with a holy calling. So if you've ever wondered if God has called you, the answer to that is a magnificent yes. He has called you with a holy calling. That scripture verse goes on to say that God doesn't call you according to what you've done. No. God calls you according to his holy calling. God is calling is holy. And he's called us and he is calling us, and we'll share these scriptures in a few moments, out of darkness into light. And I'll share those scriptures with you in a little while, but the, I want you to get that in your heart. God's calling to you is a holy calling. God's calling to you is to come out from darkness. He wants to put you in light because he has something uh, that he wants you to do. Now, it is up to people to determine what they do in the kingdom of God after that. Ephesians 2.10 says that we've been saved unto good works. And so that doesn't mean that when we get saved, we just sit around and do nothing. No, we actually get involved in the kingdom of God. And you say, well, Pastor John, what do we do in the kingdom of God? Well, we do good works in the kingdom of God. That's what we do. We have been saved, again, Ephesians 2.10, unto good works. We get saved and we start helping people. We start providing ministry for people. We start doing all sorts of things to help people people further them along in this rough and tumble world we call the world and so God has called you out of all that junk that you used to be involved in he's called you out of that with a holy calling that calling you know when he calls you out hey Samantha hey John whoever you may be when he called your name out that calling was holy and he wants you to come out of that and it's not because of anything that you've done. You can never pat yourself on the back and say, look at me. My Lord, my life is wonderful. It's only wonderful because God made it wonderful. So never let us forget, church, that God has called us with a holy calling, called us out of darkness into light for which we should be eternally grateful. Praise be to God. The Bible also says that God has called us to be saints. Imagine that. God has called us to be saints. Now, I've got another scripture verse here for you. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. And in that scripture verse, Paul says to the church of God, which is in Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Jesus Christ, saints by calling. Saints by calling. So let's break down some of those words there. Saints and sanctification. They're essentially the same word. What is sanctification? Well, sanctification is a big old long college word that means it's the process that God takes us through to become more like him. It's the process that we go through from when we first gave our life to Christ and we look like the world, we act like the world, we talk like the world. The world's influences have influenced us to such a degree to such a degree that we walk and talk and act and behave just like everybody else who is in the world, who's apart from God. But when God calls us with a holy calling, calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light, he wants us to become saints. 
So the process that he takes us through to get us into this calling of a saint is called sanctification. And so for a lot of people, it takes a long time. And as a pastor and as a believer, we have got to be long-suffering with people because depending on how long you've been in the world is, is probably in direct correlation to how long it's going to take you to get that stuff out of you. There's just a process that you go through. As we like to say around here at Fam Church, the road to repentance is rocky. <laughs> there are times, man, you take one step forward, two steps back, and you're trying to get your equilibrium. You're trying to get your, your, your foundation. Is, you're trying to make it firm. You're trying to figure out who you are now finally in Christ. And so this process of sanctification that God takes all of us through, all believers go through it. This process of sanctification that the Lord takes all of us through is a process. But at the end of the day, God is going to make sure that you, my dear friend, are a saint. Wow, that's a very encouraging word, isn't it? You say, well, Pastor John, I don't feel too much like a saint. You know how you have got no idea what I did last night. Well, I may not know what you did last night. You know what you did last night. God knows what you did last night. And you may look at your, your personal life right now and say, it's a, it's a wreck, it's a shambles, it's a mess. I couldn't do right if I wanted to. Well, I'm here to tell you that God has a way of getting through all of that stuff, working his good in your life because he has called you with a holy calling and this holy calling that he's called you out with, he is bound and determined to make you a saint. He, it's his ultimate goal is to do good in your life. It's his, it's his job to get in behind, get, to get in all that mess and to clean it up. And I'm telling you, God is working behind the scenes in your life to clean all that stuff up, to call you to become a saint. Wow, that's, that's so super packed with confidence and trust and grace and mercy blows your mind what God is doing behind the scenes to make you into somebody that he is pleased with oh I'm telling you it's a wonderful thing well here's something else God has called us to you ready this is found in 1 Corinthians 7 and 15 check this out God has called us you ready to peace. Wow. Man, you want to talk about a word for such a time as this when everything our society seems to be burning to the ground. Everywhere you look, people have lost their minds. Everywhere you look, people are filled with anxiety. They're on anxiety medications. And boy, they just, everywhere you look, they're just filled with all this angst. And you just, you get around them. They make you nervous even getting around them because they're, they're unsettled and they, there's no peace in them at all. That's not God. That's not God. According to the Word, He has called us to peace. So I speak through this phone to you, man. I speak through this camera to you, lady. Please listen to me. God has called you to peace. Let the peace of God rule and reign in your life. Let your filter run through the peace of God no matter what comes your way. Say, so, Pastor John, you got no idea how my family life is. Pastor John, you have no idea the, the turmoil that I face at work every week. And I may not. But this is what I do know. In the middle of a family that's at each other's throats, in the middle of a workplace where you can't even trust people, people stabbing one another in the back, just to get ahead in the middle of all of that all the stress and the turmoil God has called his people to peace to be a peaceable people it's the peace of God right and the patience of God that leads us into places to where we can live in the middle of madness and it never ruffle our feathers at all why and how do we do that? Because the peace of God is amazing. 
and it's ready and available for you today, and it's, it's made available to you in abundance. God's got a lot of it. He is the very essence of peace, and he's speaking that into your life today through me, through some sort of screen, whatever screen you're looking at. God is using my words to bring about peace into your life because God has called you out of all that mess and has called you to be a peaceable person. Wow, that's a wonderful, wonderful scripture verse. Well, can I continue? The Lord has also called us you ready? To be virtuous. You say, Pastor John, what in the world? Virtuous. Well, that is found in 2 Peter 1 and 3. And it says, through the knowledge of him, he has called us to his glory and his virtue. You may be asking today, well, Pastor John, I don't have a dictionary of handy right now and on the ready. What does virtuous mean? I've heard that word before. What's virtue? What's it? Well, if you boil it all down, it essentially means this to be good, to be good. God has called you to be good. So be a good person today. You say, well, Pastor John, you don't know what my friend did to me. I may not, but I know this. Regardless of what anybody's done to you, regardless of what anybody has said to you, regardless of how anybody has stabbed you in the back, God has not called you to act in kind. He has called you to forsake all that stuff and to live a life that is good. So today, be good no matter what. God has caused you to be good. Say, well, Pastor John, on the inside, I'm just filled with rage. I just want to exact a pound of flesh. I just want to give them as good as I've been getting. No. You say, well, I don't even know if I can muster up enough energy to do that. Yeah, you can. Listen, if you're a believer who's watching this and you're ate up on the inside and you're wondering today, is there any way I can get through this? Yes, absolutely. If you are a believer today and you have Jesus in your life, then the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead can help you get over this stuff that, you, that you're dealing with. Listen, if, he, if the power of God can raise Jesus from the dead, he can help you be good. He can help you tame your tongue. He can help you be virtuous. He can help you be good. He, this is what he's in the business of doing. He, this is, listen, he excels at this sort of stuff. So today, man, let it go. It's not worth it. Hey, you know it's not worth it. It's eating your guts out. Let it go. Be good. Be good. If somebody does harm to you, do good to them. How do you do that? By the power of God. He's called you to it. Well, as I've said before, God's called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. There's a lot of good things there. Lastly, this morning... I'd like to share this with you. 1 Peter 5 and 10, the word of the Lord says this, that he has called us unto an eternal glory. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, listen, all this stuff that we see in the world today, all of the madness, one day, my friends and my neighbors, it's all going to come to an end. One day, we won't have to worry about it anymore. Wouldn't it be good? If one day we didn't have to worry about balancing a checkbook and getting the kids up and trying to get them around and at the same time going to work in the middle of a pandemic and all this stuff that's going on in our lives today, my goodness gracious, wouldn't it be a blessing to be able to get to a place to where we know that one day the Lord God is going to take us to heaven. He has given us, and he's going to give us an eternal glory. We are going to get to share in the glory of God. Man, how marvelous is that? God's called us to that, and when God calls it, it's going to happen, okay? It's like, a, it's like an umpire calling balls and strikes in a baseball game. God calls it, that's it. 
You can complain and fuss and moan and groan, try to kick dirt on his cleats. It's not going to do you any good. God has called it. It is what it is, and you might as well deal with it. So I'm, I know there are some people who are watching. You feel like you're kicking and screaming all the way to heaven. Well, guess what? God's going to pull you, drag you, kicking kid, kid and screaming all the way into heaven. And so, you know what? God's got you. He's called you to an eternal glory. And if God has got his spirit on the inside of you, then, hey, rest in that knowledge. Every time I turn around, I feel like I'm around people who are scared to death that they're going to miss heaven. Listen, if you've got the spirit of God in you, he's not going to give up on you. He's got you. Don't you worry about things like that. You go on and start doing good works as he's called us to do and work on these things that he's called us to, into holiness and to virtuousness and all of these kinds of things. Let's think on good things. Let God be God, and we'll do what we've got to do. And at the end of the day, it's going to work out all right. That I'm confident of. And so, be encouraged today. The Lord God has called you and going to put you and place you in, into eternal glory. Praise God. I believe that. I, hey, listen, I've staked my flag on that promise that the Lord God is going to do that in my life. Well, I don't do this often, but I forgot to share these two scripture verses with you because I told you at the beginning of the video I was going to do it. And so I want to share those with you before we do call it quits today here on our Sunday morning time together. The first one was that God has called us um, out of darkness. And so the scripture verse for that is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He says in that scripture verse that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness. Well, aren't you glad that God has called you out of darkness? I certainly am. I tell you what, I can remember back in the day where I was living in darkness. But thanks be to God, the Lord has called us out of darkness. And he's not only called us out of darkness, it's not like he just calls us out of darkness and leaves us there in some sort of neutral place. No. God's called us out of darkness, and he's called us into his marvelous light. That's found in 1 Peter 2, 9. The word of the Lord says, he has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So do me a favor today. Walk in the likeness that is Jesus. Be rested and assured all these scripture verses that I've shared with you today. That God's up to something behind the scenes call you out of this darkness, place you in the marvelous light, called you with a holy calling, called you to be saints, working on your sanctification so that you can do good, and he's going to make sure you do good. He's working behind the scenes to make sure that you're doing good so that one day you can experience his eternal glory because he's called you to it. And praise God, as I said, I'm putting my hope, my faith, and my trust in that. If God said it, that's good enough for me. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, I love you in the Lord. I hope you have a great day today. Go off and do something fun today and enjoy yourself and know that Pastor John here at Fam Church loves you with everything I've got in me. Hey, you take care, you be blessed, and so long. <laughs>